Okay, there's one thing that I wanted to tell you at the end of the lecture about Conan's theorem and also the Karp Lipton theorem, uh, which I didn't get time for, but I'll tell it to you now. So let's remember Conan's theorem. Uh, he showed that there exists a language L in the complexity class sigma 4p, so in the polynomial time hierarchy, albeit pretty high up there at level 4, such that L does not have a uh, fixed polynomial size circuit, circuits of size n to the 99. Okay, and 99 was just a large fixed constant I picked for fun. You can do it for any constant. Okay, so the thing that I want to tell you now is actually a strict improvement on Conan's theorem. How does it improve? It improves on it by getting this class sigma 4p down to sigma 2p. So it shows there's a language uh, at a lower point in the hierarchy, sigma 2p, which uh, does not have circuits of size n to the 99. So how do you prove this? theorem. Well, it's a little twist on the, you can put on top of the proof of the theorem, and it works by a simple case analysis. So there are two cases to consider in our proof. Case one is that sat is not in p slash poly, which is probably true, by the way. So why are we done in uh, case one? Well, in case one, we're sort of very done. In this case, sat, well, of course, it's in np, which is a subset of sigma 2p, and it, uh, by assumption of case one, doesn't have circuits of any polynomial size, so it certainly doesn't have circuits of size n to the 99. Okay, so that case is very easy. That will be our language. What is case two? Well, case two is simply the opposite of case one. Sat is np slash poly. Now, of course, sat is np complete, so it's easy to see that that implies that all of np is in p slash poly. And that's exactly the scenario considered by the karp lipton theorem that we proved in class. So in this case, the karp lipton theorem implies what? It says that if np is in p slash poly, then the polynomial time hierarchy collapses to, and where does it collapse to? Collapses to sigma 2p. And in that case, in particular, if the whole hierarchy collapses to sigma 2p, that certainly implies that sigma 4, the fourth level, also collapses to sigma 2p. And now we're done by Conan's theorem because we can simply take the language that Conan constructs that's in sigma 4p, but not in size n to the 99, and say, well, in case 2, sigma 4p is the same thing as sigma 2p. So the uh, language in question is also in sigma 2p. So regardless of which of the two cases we're in, we've completed the proof. And as I mentioned, I really think of this as kind of a comical proof. Uh, the case analysis is a, really a funny way to show it. Um, in particular, it's not a constructive proof. So at the, at the end of the day, we're not exactly sure what is the language L, which is in sigma 2p, but not in size n to the 99. It could be sat. Sat is definitely in sigma 2p. We're not sure if it's not in size n to the 99. Probably isn't, but we didn't prove it. Or the language that does the trick could be Conan's language, L. We're definitely sure it's not in size n to the 99. We just don't know if it's in sigma 2p. It's in sigma 4p, but we're not sure that it's in sigma 2p. But either way, one of these two cases must be true. So there must exist a language in sigma 2p without circuits of size n to the 99.